All right, Shalom Israel. I'm Captain Tazi Warner to my right. Officer Yazia. All right, today we're gonna go over another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains, all right? And today's topic, we're gonna go over understanding the Ten Commandments, okay? So we're gonna just, not gonna waste no time, let's get up into it real quick, because uh, when we read in the scriptures, we hear about the Big Ten. That's what Creflo Dollar talk about, all right? You don't gotta keep the Big Ten. But you gotta understand that when you find and realize and know that you are Israel, you must keep the commandments of the Most High God as Israel. Let's get that in the scriptures real quick. Let's go all the way to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelations real quick. Let's check this out. Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. The book of Revelations chapter 14 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. The saints are the Israelites. All right, all the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. It says, here is the patience of the saints, read. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. These are the saints, the Israelites, that keep the commandments of God. So even in the, Rev in the book of Revelation, it mentions the commandments. Why? Because by keeping the commandments is the only way that you shall inherit eternal life, the tree of life or receive the gift of the kingdom of heaven. Is that it on that? Read on. And the faith of Jesus. And the commandments is not it. And the belief, the faith of the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, all right? So from there, let's get uh, Second Ezra's real quick. Second Ezra chapter seven. Second Ezra and the Apocrypha, chapter seven. Verse 20 and 21. Let's get this right. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 20. Right. For there be many that perish in this life. In this life, the lives that we live, there be many that perish. Why? Because of disobedience, because of sin. Because they don't want to be told what to do, thus saith the Lord. And that's usually nine times out of ten the problem with a lot of our people. They hate to being told what to do. They think they grown or they their own man and their own life. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But you got to live it right. And it's okay for people to tell you what to do to prolong your life and live a better life. There's nothing wrong with that. Read on, come on. And that's what we do. We use the commandments and we build morality within ourselves and our nation and our families. Read on, come on. For there be many that perish in this life. Why? Because they despise the law of God. They despise the laws of God when it says, Thou shalt not steal. They'd rather rob somebody. They'd rather kill. They'd rather commit adultery. Why? Because it feels good. Read on, come on. That is set before them. Right, that is set before them. They despise the laws of God. We shouldn't be like that. That's not the way to be. If you want change in your communities, if you want change within yourself, within your life, if you seek in peace, you must keep God's commandments. That's the only way to get it. Read on, come on. For God had given straight commandment. God gave straight commandment from the beginning. The Lord said, plain and simple, man and a woman, don't kill. Don't steal. He gave it from the beginning. How do you know that? You read that in examples in Genesis when Cain killed Abel. That was a sin. All right. Read on. Come on. To such as Cain. To such as Cain. To all men. Read. What they should do to live. The Lord gave us simple, straight commandments. What we should do to what? To live. To live. Read. Come on. Even as they came. Even as they came. Read on. And what they should and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And the way how you avoid punishment or judgment or a break in your peace, the way that you avoid judgment from the Most High God is by keeping those laws. The Lord made our lives plain and simple. We're the ones that try to make it hard. Here we go. Let's get it real quick. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, because I know what they're saying. There's only two commandments that you got to keep. It's only two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul. And love thy neighbor as yourself. It's only two. The big two. That's it. You talk about ten or three or six hundred and thirteen. Nah. You don't understand. Like I said earlier. Christ, when he came, he did not come to do away with the laws. Because Christ kept the laws himself. When Christ was on the cross, he didn't say, okay, everybody, just do what you want to now. No. He didn't say that. When Christ came, actually before this, let's get Matthew 5, verse 17. Matthew 5, 17. Let's see what Christ said out of his own mouth concerning the law. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Christ's purpose wasn't to destroy the law or the prophets. Prophets, read on. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So if we call ourselves Christians, if you call yourselves believers of Jesus, of Christ, then you'll do the things that Christ did. Because Christ came and he fulfilled the law of what? He fulfilled the laws pertaining to the Sabbath day. Right. He fulfilled the law pertaining to honor thy mother and thy father. Not worshiping any other gods before me. All right? Now, uh, what else? Uh, thou shalt not covet. He fulfilled those laws, meaning that he did them laws himself. So if you are Christian, you'll do the things that Christ do, but not in these last days. In these last days, you'll find Christians making gods unto themselves, mm -hmm. bowing down to the trees and putting gifts on there like you do on Christmas. All right, so we're going to go into that a little bit. So you can kind of see the difference between if you're doing right in your life or if you need to change and do that which is good. And change the wrong and, um, and do good, all right? If you're doing evil or if you're doing good. That's how you're going to be able to find out what you should be doing in this life. So go back to that, Mark. Chapter 12, verse 20. Let's see what Christ said. Uh, 30, excuse me. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Read before that. Read the verse before that. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Right. And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. All right. That's and, the first of all commandments. The, uh, there is no other God but the God of Israel. So a lot of people love to worship the tree as if it's a God. Why? Because they make celebrations onto these festivals or these celebrations or these so-called holidays, all right? They make a God unto themselves. But there's only one God that created the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the waters. There's only one God that did this. That's the God to worship. Read on, come on. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. This is the first commandment. You shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and all thy soul. There's only one God. Read on. And with all thy mind. Right. And with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. So Christ was given a general outline of the first commandment. Because within the first commandment, you're not supposed to be keeping Christmas, keeping so-called New Year's, keeping Easter, keeping St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Halloween. Whatever other so-called celebration that you, blacks and Hispanics and Native Indians, do thinking that you're celebrating God in that Thanksgiving. You think that you, you don't understand that when you celebrate these customs, you actually represent and you worship that God that's behind that custom. Like Christmas, Saturnalia, all right? Valentine's Day, Cupid in love and lust. Um, New Year's, Janice. When you get the term uh, father, what is it, um, father, father time and baby new year, all right? You worship these other gods. Let me show you. Christ says something about that. John chapter 4, verse 22. And we're going to get into the laws. John 4, verse 22. John chapter 4 and verse 22. Right. Ye worship, ye know not what. So as I stated earlier, you don't have to know you're worshiping another God to actually know you're worshiping another God. Because that's not the president, that's not the, the, the representation in society. You've grown up to understand, to learn that what you're doing is right. Read on. We know what we worship. We know what we worship. Why? Because God said what to worship. When you read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. Read on. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews because God told us what to do to inherit eternal life or to avoid punishment. Like we read earlier. Go back to that in Mark. 20, I mean 12 verse 31. Read Mark chapter 12 verse 31. Right. And the second is like, namely this. Now Christ is saying the second is like the first. Namely, this specifically. That's what it's saying, right? That's what Christ is saying. The second commandment is just like the first commandment. Read on. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How do you love your neighbor as you, yourself? How do you love God first off? All right? Ways that you love your neighbor as yourself is one of the commandments say, Thou shalt not steal. Steal, you can't steal from God. You can't grab nothing from God and take it out of the sky. Right. So what, the Christ, what Christ is saying right here is you're not supposed to steal from your neighbor. 
your brother. That's what that word translates to. Your neighbor is the brother or sister of your people. You're not supposed to steal from your people. Read on, come on. There is none other commandment greater than these. So here we go. When you, the scripture says, thou shalt not commit uh, adultery. You don't do that against your neighbor. Now, let's go to it real quick. Now, the second commandment is like the first. So if you don't commit and uh, deal with other gods, you're committing spiritual fornication with the Most High God. Likewise, in the marriage between man and woman, you don't sleep outside of your marriage. Guess what? You're committing a, uh, fornications or adultery against your spouse. All right. So let's get to it real quick. The first commandment, Exodus chapter 20. Verse 3, and we're going to read many examples on what to do and what not to do. Read that, come on. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Right. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Plain and simple, straight commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. All right? So how do you make, the, how do you understand? Because I thought that Christmas was good. I thought that Valentine's Day was good. That's what I was raised and taught. Well, if it's not in the Bible, one key uh, plain way to understand it is don't do it. Right. Plain and simple. Here we go, read on. Or, no, read that again. Read that again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt, okay, read that again. I'm sorry. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right, here we go. Give me Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. So the way in which you worship other gods or you have other gods before the Most High God that created the sun, the moon, the stars, earth the heavens and above the earth the grass and the trees the way that you show that you love other gods or you worship other gods is by these celebrations because your god that created all of this told you what to celebrate all right read that real quick verse 2 leviticus chapter 23 verse 2 right speak unto the children of israel mm -hmm. and say unto them concerning the feast of the lord Concerning the festivals or feasts or celebrations or high holy days of the Lord, read on, which ye shall proclaim, which you shall proclaim, meaning amongst your neighbors. Now, this is like, this is a, a scripture one in, itself, and one in itself, because it's, to, it's telling you what Christ said in the book of Mark. It said, the first commandment is love your God, and then the second is just like it, love thy neighbor as thyself. So the Lord said, these are his celebrations. And this is what you shall proclaim to the people of your nation. That's what the Bible's saying right now. Read on, come on. Which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Amongst who? The nation, the, the neighbors of your people. Because this is our custom of us being Israel. This is what we should be doing. Not Christmas. Not New Year's. Not Halloween, because it's not in the Bible. Not Valentine's Day, because it's not in the Bible nor any other celebrations. Read on, come on. Even these are my feasts. Even these are God's feasts. So if you don't find it in the scriptures, don't do it. And one celebration in particular, God literally told you not to do in the scriptures. When you read, read it for yourself. Jeremiah chapter 10. It talks about how you're not supposed to bring a tree into your house, put gifts under it, and worship it as if it's a, another God. All right? As if it's a God. Okay, here we go. Um... From that, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. So that's where you get, we're supposed to be keeping Passover, Feast of First Fruits, Memorial Blowing Trumpets. All right, what else? We got Day of Atonement. You're supposed to be keeping uh, 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 Tabernacles. You got the Day of Simon, the Day of Nicanor. You got the Feast of Dedication. You have the New Moons. You have 52 New Moons. Or oh, is it 52? Well, oh, 12 New Moons, excuse me, I'm sorry. 12 New Moons. 52 Sabbaths out of the year. We have a lot of celebrations, but for some reason, we are so confused and we know we think that Christmas is what God ordained. And then we're gonna get into that a little bit more, dealing with that in particular. Come on, read on. Read that. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Yep. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Concerning the first commandment when the Lord said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read that. What does Solomon say? Thus in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Thus in process of time, a king... Read the verse before that, actually. Read that verse before that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse chapter 14, verse 15. Right, right. 
For a father afflicted with a father afflicted. This father in particular that's afflicted, we're talking about the topic of Christmas. This father was speaking of Nimrod. Alright, read on, come on. With untimely mourning, mm -hmm. when he had made an image of his child soon taken away. He made a child, he made an image of his child named Tammuz. And he worshiped his child as what? The evergreen tree. Because where his child was buried, a tree sprung up after that. And we started to worship this custom well before Christmas. Once again, the commandment that we're dealing with is, Thou shalt not have other gods before me. All right, read on. Now honored him as a god. And now people honor this child, the king's son, as a god. Read on. Which was then a dead man. Which was a, just a dead man, like all people that died. Read on. And delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and so sacrifices. under the king, he made a proclamation. Listen, we're supposed to give sacrifices and what else? It says ceremonies. And sacrifices. Ceremonies and sacrifices. Those ceremonies are festivals, all right? Back in ancient times, in the time of Rome, you had uh, celebrations to uh, Bacchus, Bacchanal, you call it today. Um, where you drink wine and revel. Um, back then, Christmas was a custom that was kept way before what they say December the 25th. All right, way before that time date when Christ was born. All right, so this was a custom that was kept, and people don't understand and realize that you're worshiping another God behind this. Read on where you at. Come on. Thus, in the process of time, mm -hmm. an ungodly custom grown strong. Thus, in the process of time, talking about 10 decades, centuries afterwards, that's what the time we're living in now, it was centuries and decades ago where this ungodly custom was set up. And it was what, Read. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong right. was kept as a law. This was kept as a law, meaning we got to do this. If you don't, it's going to be death. You were forced to keep these days. Read on, come on. And graven images. And graven images was also one of the, the next commandment that we're going to deal with. Read on. Were worshipped by the commandments of kings. These graven images were set up so you can remember this false god that you're not supposed to be worshipping. All right. Read on. Who men could not honor in, in presence. Right. Who men could not honor in presence because that thing in particular that we worship is not even a, it's not even a lie. So you got to ask yourself, why is it that I had to put a gift under the tree? Why is it that I have to put uh, jingle bells on the, the, the branch of the tree? Why is it that I got to put an angel on top of the tree? Where did it come from? Question. Food for thought. Just try it. All right. Here we go. Then you got to ask yourself, what, what, what gift... Okay, they say that December the 25th was Jesus Christ's birthday, right? What did he get for his second birthday? What did, his, what did, what did Joseph and Mary get him? You got to ask yourself these things, and you'll find out that these are just customs of men, and they made them. Read that verse again, ungodly custom. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Right, it was kept as a law, meaning a custom to continue generations afterwards. We don't. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Alright, that's where you get Easter, Christmas, all these false dead customs. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.